Okay, so thanks a lot. Um, well, I'm going to try to be a little bit quicker than, than expected, okay, because we should be on time with the lunch, more or less five, ten minutes later, it's okay, but we should not go further than, than that time. So thanks a lot, Olaf, for, for your invitation here. I'm going to present the, a project that we are running with another Spanish universities. Um, I'm Javier Fabra. I'm I'm director of digital transformation in the University of Zaragoza. I'm also part of the vice-rectorate of digital education. And well, I'm here on behalf of the DIREPO consortium. So we are a consortium of four Spanish universities. We are University of Zaragoza, but we have here today also, well, he has not arrived, not Arturo. We have people from the University of Extremadura, from the University of La Rioja, that is Jose here, and from the University of the Balearic Islands, that we have here also more people coming, so thanks a lot, because I know it's, it's complex to, to reach Saragossa, but it's perfect. So I'm going to present a project that we have been running for some time ago. We are still on the development phase. It's called the Repo, and it's an open repository of digital resources for universities. So just to, to make the context, this is inside the Plan Unidigital, which is a Spanish plan with the funding of the European Union with the Next Generation Funds. And it's a, a plan developed by the Ministry of Universities with a total budget of about 142 million euros. And the idea is to achieve the digitalization of the university system. So to do this, um, just they aim to, to technical, material, and human resources for the modernization of the Spanish university system. They make also some actions to stimulate uh, the innovation and the digital transformation in the organizations, especially universities and educative centers. And they develop strategic projects in the field of educational innovation. And in this context, in the projects, they try to divide into several lines of action. Then from the different lines the plan Unidigital proposed, we, we were just joining with other universities around, around Spain. And we were thinking about one project that could fit into service projects, software development projects, incentives for the digitalization and teaching in the universities, and then it should have some impact on the strategic and, and coordination parts of the, of the system. And then we were thinking about why not to do something that allows us to centralize all the digital content from the different universities we have here in Spain. And then we propose the repo. The repo is a collaborative project between, between us. And the main aim is the creation of a shared repository for digital production generated from universities. And this means that we are not only to store video and other multimedia content. We are going to store documents, presentations, audios, classes, whatever. So any production that you can do during your teaching period, the idea is that you should be able to upload to the repo and then to link, to share, and especially to share between the universities. So we, we were thinking on a federated focus. So our idea was that I am able to do something and then to share with my colleagues from Balearic Islands or maybe with my colleagues from another university. And we can do this if we are sharing the same infrastructure for storing and for playing and for everything. Then we were thinking on how to do a, a, a modular, flexible, scalable architecture and, and should, it should consider the multimedia content, of course, but also open educational resources, uh, open training and other main concepts that were just uh, focusing on the, on the plan. Then the Europa, uh, it's just a, a proposal that should be exclusively built with open source software. Uh, preferably hosted on GitHub. This was a requirement also from the fundings. And it's based on solutions which have been originated in universities' environments with broad international academic adoption. Uh, also, it has, been, it has to, to be capable of integrating with external systems, with other learning management systems. It should have an open API, so we should be able to integrate with third-part systems, software applications, whatever. And it should also, of course, uh, be able to manage multi-stream content management. So here we are pointing to semi-autonomous production of audiovisual content for educational use, minimize the necessity of uh, intervention on the recording, and trying to do something very, very self-manageable. With integration and services, um, we also wanted that the, the platform should have a, an intelligent search engine, which should be able not only to search by title or authors, whatever, but we, only, we also want 
to be able to look into the content of the, of the resources. So in case, for instance, a student wants to look for a concept in the portal, we want that any resource, documents, presentations, even videos, should be the, the result from, from such a search. So for instance, if you are looking for a concept and this concept has been referenced in a video, you should get the answer with the exact, exact pointer to the video and then you should be able to replay in that exact point. So it's just combining different, different techn techniques. And we wanted also a, a deployment using cloud. We don't want or just uh, the possibility of migrating to on-premise infrastructure. By, by default, we prefer to have a cloud infrastructure. So we don't know exactly what will we need, so we prefer to have something very flexible in the, in the lower part. And we want first to, to be able to measure all the systems, to get all the numbers, and then once we have, maybe we can just move to on-premise infrastructures of uh, every university or not, or we can just live on the, on the cloud. With the, with the evolution, the design is thought to, to allow adaptations and improvements. Uh, we should be able to adapt the system to educational and technological demands. And with respect to the community, uh, we wanted to, to generate or at least to contribute to a growing community of users and developers around the systems and around the, the software we are going to use. So in the end, our abstract view of the architecture should be something like this. In the, in the center, we have just the computing and the storage infrastructure for, for the Europol. We have an open API just to access all the components we have behind it. And then we were separating components with the, with the functionality. Then we, we differentiate ingestion, edition, transcoding, uh, metadata insertion and cataloging, uh, subtitles or the automatic translation of the contents, visualization layer, searching, and then exporting. So you should be able also to, to get all the contents exported from the, from the platform. We also consider that we were needing a, a data lake or at least the possibility to access to analytics module, not only to know if somebody is accessing a resource, but uh, already it's that should be something more complex, something like allowing me to know if somebody has been playing the video in full, if they are just disconnecting in the five minutes, if they are just downloading a document, or if they are using the online player, whatever. And of course, it has to be integrated with all our systems or all or learning management systems we have. For instance, here in, in Zaragoza and Balearica Islands and Extremadura, we are running Moodle. But for instance, in, in La Rioja, they are running Blackboard. So we were thinking on direct integration or LTI integration. Okay? So our, our aim is that the platform should be easily integrated in any running system that up to the moment, if you're running LTI, should be possible. Then with the data flow, we, we consider a normal data flow for multimedia content, and what we did was only to manipulate this flow in case you are using other contents. So for instance, if you are using a presentation or a document, you don't have to transcode or, or whatever. You directly can insert the metadata. In this case also, you don't, you don't have to make the subtitles of a, of a document, so then you should go directly to the visualization. So we thought on a very simple data flow, which should be compliant with the current data flows and should not introduce any additional complexity. And with respect to the infrastructure, we were thinking on running first on cloud, but we were aiming to use a technology agnostic uh, perspective. So we want that the, the infrastructure in which is going to be deployed should be one at the moment, but we could move very easily to a different one. So we should not rely on technological aspects of the provider, not using specific services, not being just, just avoiding the, the, the technological lock-in. So we don't want in two years to, to not be able to move to a different provider because we are using this platform and this is not available in a different provider. Then we follow the, the, the normal phases no, in, a, in a project like this. First, we were working for some months in the, in the requirements specification document. We, we developed a very long document with a lot of characteristics we wanted, uh, with all the specifications, formats, whatever. And on, on the same time, we were doing the market consultation. On the market consultation, we were just um, asking universities that we found 
that more than the, the 40% of the Spanish public universities are using Pumukit or just Pumukit plus Opencast as the, as the repository for audiovisual resources, which in the end was the hardest or the more complex part of this project. Uh, if we consider that, that Pumukit was the first open platform to integrate with Opencast for multimedia portal, and, and also we were just looking to other projects like, for instance, UNED, the national university in this instance, uh, it's uh, the, the Spanish Open University. It's similar to the Open University in the United Kingdom. It has a, a very large repository with more than 42,000 hours of educational videos, and they are running uh, Pumukit. And it's maintained also by Teltec, which was a Spanish company. Uh, it's connected to a, to a MOOC platform, which is based on Open EDX, and it has a, a thousand, hundreds of thousands of students registered. Then, with this in mind, we prepare the specifications, and then we, we did the, the analysis of the state of art in other universities, and then we define the technical specifications, and then we run a public tender, because it was compulsory, of course. In this public tender, we had several participants, and in the end, we, we get the resolution, and we started the development with a contractor, that in our case was Teltec, which, by the way, was very, very nice and very easy, because they knew exactly the technology, they knew exactly the, the, the whole the background we were needing for, for this project. And well, a little bit to, to put into perspective, uh, Teltec, it's a, a company, a Spanish company, which has been focused on, on the open online video solutions for education since 2008, has participated in several European projects. Uh, it's one of the two companies which are running the Up to You project, which is founded by Horizon 2020. And well, this project is very important for us because um, in this part, Teltec is responsible for the integration of video platforms in complex LMS environments, which, by the way, was something that we wanted. And then the promoters of Teltec, uh, they have also some background on the, on the Opencast project from, from its inception. Uh, they have been uh, responsible for the, for the capture agent Gallicaster, this has been used extensively in universities, as Cape Town, Uruguay, Leipzig, Cologne, or Manchester. And well, um, the later the fleet of Gallicaster exceeds the, the 100 units. Then with Teltec, we started working in the project. And then, at the moment, uh, the main image was that we were thinking on a true multimedia and resource repository where we should be able, using Opencast and Pumukit, to store video, images, audio, lectures, documents, presentations, whatever you can use in, a, in the classes at the university. And of course, we were thinking on the Moodle integration for, for this Moodle or just LMS integration. For this, the Digirepo Multimedia Server is uh, integrating Opencast with Pumukit over a database with the management of the video. We have Gallicaster for the, for the capture of lectures and then as personal recorder, and then all the production is connected directly to Moodle, it's integrated, so all the teachers can manage directly all the resources using the Moodle platform. So the idea also is that they don't have to, to use different systems, but they will have everything integrated through a, a single entry point. As an institutional repository, we are going to integrate the different solutions we use for, for sharing classes and everything. We have big button, Zoom, Blackboard, Teams, Google Meet, wherever. Uh, we also will use the, the Garicaster as the personal recorder. And then we will publish everything on a web portal and on the same time will be available for Moodle and for any other LMS that we have through the LTI integration. I'm not going to enter into very technical details. We have here also the, the people from Teltec. It's uh, Joan, uh, Soan and, and Vicente. And in case you, you want just to go into further detail, I suppose they will be delighted to, to share with you. And this was one of the important parts. We wanted to have a federated view of the system. So we wanted that from the, DG repo, from the central repository, we want to have Every, each university, its own view of the Pumukit and Opencast system, but we want also to have a shared portal. So we want to be able to ser share certain uh, resources between all the participants in the project. So they are working also on this, on the possibility of the, of the federation, just through the change of metadata and the configuration of different options. 
And well, this is one of the, of the aims of the project as well. Uh, with respect to integration, this is just a, a high level view also of the components. We are integrating into the system. I'm not going to, to focus on this. Um, as conclusion, uh, we are expecting to finalize the project by December of this year. Maybe we'll take a little bit delay, but it should not be because we have the, the formal uh, limits it's on, on December. And um, we think that this, this was a great opportunity to bring together the best of, the, of all the communities from the OpenCast, plus the Gallicaster, plus the Pumu Kit, and plus the other software that we have involved in the project. Uh, we think also that it's very important to be able to extend the, the capabilities of the academic repositories, not only for video, but also for any other resource that we are generating. We think that it has to be an open source project. It must be offered to the community, and it should be something that anybody, not only from universities, but from any other institution, center, wherever, they should be able to, to download and use, even contribute with the development. And we expect a, a rapid adoption of the, of the project by other universities. Uh, for this last point, uh, Redidis. Redidis is an institution here in, in Spain which runs uh, the Spanish Academic and Research Network. And then they provide us with uh, hardware facilities, uh, with advanced communication services, and with other services for the scientific community. Uh, then Redidis made a, a call for the projects to add to their services. So Redidis is offering different services to all the universities in Spain. And the Europo is one of the projects that has been selected as, as, uh, to be integrated into its service portfolio as a result from the plan. So for us, this is very important because it means that other universities, as soon as we finish this project, they will just be able to integrate very easily the, the, the Europo infrastructure on their institutions. And Redis will manage all the, all the infrastructure, so this part should be covered by them. And it will be the service portfolio of Redis is like a set of services that for the universities, has, they have a, a very, very lower price. And then they, they used to cover with the high cost of infrastructures and other hardware-related issues. And to finish, uh, with respect to, to Gallicaster, uh, Teltec created a, a professional version, a pro version of the Gallicaster capture agent with additional features compared to the basic capture agents. Uh, this version, the professional version, was commercialized by Teltec through the payment of, of licenses and, and the code was closed, was not open. Then, uh, when we were just talking about the, the DREPO project, uh, Teltec compromised that thanks to the DREPO project, they will release the Gallicaster professional, Gallicaster Pro, and they will publish the source code on GitHub. So it will become an, an open source project as a result also. And this is all. Thank you very much. In case you have any question. Thank you.